Hey, do you mind subscribing <laughs> just before this uh, video starts? Thanks, appreciate it. Here are 10 diseases poised for an outbreak. Number 10, the mumps. In March of 2016, Harvard University announces two cases of the mumps on campus. One month later, 40 cases explode, leaving public health officials scrambling for answers. What was terrifying is that all of the students had received the MMR vaccine, measles, mumps, and rubella, and there was a 99% overall vaccination rate at the university. What was going on? Santa Monica, June 17, 2017, 42 people in the west side of LA contract mumps. All of them were vaccinated. Is it possible that the MMR vaccine no longer works against the new mumps strain? Two virologist whistleblowers from Merck allege that Merck actually stacked the deck to make it appear like the MMR vaccine worked better than it did. Could this be the reason for failing immunity in areas that should have been covered? The case is set for trial in 2018. Number 9. NDM1 Carolyn Jenkins was frustrated with the cost of healthcare at home, so she traveled to India to deal with a hip fracture. After returning home, all seemed well at first, but then she grew violently ill. Initially, she blamed the jet lag, but soon it became clear the situation was far more serious. Doctors determined she had picked up the variant of a germ called Klebsiella pneumoniae, bolstered by NDM1. NDM1 isn't a bacteria, but a gene that can turn viruses and other bacteria into superbugs. And apparently, it's in the water supply in India. She spent three weeks in a Nevada hospital where doctors tried 26 different antibiotics. Ultimately, the infection entered her bloodstream and Carolyn died. Just 10 years ago, before the era of NDM1, Carolyn would have responded to antibiotics and survived. But with NDM1 in the water supply of the world's second most populous nation, how long until it spreads to the rest of the world? Number 8. DT-104 Elaine, a 34-year-old New Hampshire expectant mother, visits her doctor's office, complaining of severe stomach pain, vomiting, diarrhea, fever, and chills. She's diagnosed with salmonella, a common foodborne infection, and given a prescription for an antibiotic. Two days later, her baby miscarries due to the stress of the infection on her system. The same week, a two-year-old boy is admitted to the hospital in Massachusetts, infected with salmonella, also resistant to antibiotics. Luke dies of dehydration and bloodstream infection. Two days later, 325 people are dead. One day later, 1,730 deaths and 220,000 illnesses have occurred across North America. DT-104 is referred to as the next generation of salmonella, and it's carried on the feet of the common house fly. So next time a fly lands on your burger, eh, you might want to think twice before taking another bite. Number 7. Tick-Borne Illnesses Louise Danzig was a 63-year-old nurse from Montauk in Easton, Long Island. In the summer of 2014, she ate a hamburger after a visit to the local farmer's market. She woke up with swollen hands that felt like they were on fire with itching. She could feel her lips and tongue were getting swollen, and by the time she reached for the phone to call 911, she almost lost the ability to speak and her airway was closing. Louise contracted a deadly allergy to red meat call alpha-gal syndrome after being bitten by a lone star tick. Cases are spreading. The newest hotspots, Duluth, Minnesota, Hanover, New Hampshire, and the eastern tip of Long Island, where at least 100 cases have been reported in 2017 alone. Number 6. Chikungunya It's an extremely painful virus which can leave victims unable to sit up for weeks. It's carried by the same Aedes aegypti mosquito that's responsible for Zika. But there are two different strains. The Asian strain of the virus has been responsible for an explosion of cases in the Caribbean, but it can only be carried by Aedes aegypti which lives primarily in the southeast. But there's another variation called E1226V, and that strain can be carried by the Asian tiger mosquito, which can live as far north as southern New England. All you need is one tourist arriving with the virus in their blood to kick off an epidemic. Number five, deadly UTIs. Oh, ladies, isn't it the worst? I mean, cranberry juice only goes so far, and experts predict that in 10 years, nearly half of UTIs will require an IV drip and aggressive antibiotic treatment. And that's the good news. 
Portland, Maine, October 23, 2007. A woman had gone to care for her sister who had suffered serious recurrent urinary tract infections for five years. A week later, sick and feverish, she was admitted to a Maine hospital where she got the antibiotic Cipro. Didn't work. Three days later, she developed septic shock, switched her to another set of powerful drugs than another, and on the fifth day, despite the aggressive treatment, she died. Lab culture showed the organism responsible was E. coli ST131. So get ready for some deadly UTIs, folks. I don't think the cranberry juice is gonna cut it. Number four, super gonorrhea. Super gonorrhea is really fun to say, but not so much to have. And in March of 2018, English government health officials say a man in the UK picked up the world's worst case after a sexual rendezvous with a woman in Southeast Asia. Gonorrhea is transmitted through unprotected vaginal, oral, or anal intercourse, or just by touching privates with an infected partner. Even worse, a person may have no symptoms but can still transmit the infection. If you see thick green or yellow discharge from your genitals, you should probably call a doctor and also hope and pray that you don't have this new super antibiotic resistant strain. The World Health Organization says about 78 million people are infected with gonorrhea each year. What happens when this super strain of gonorrhea goes nuclear? Number three, H7N9. Since its emergence in 2013, China has experienced seasonal epidemics of avian influenza subtype H7N9. There were 714 cases from October 2016 to June 8, 2017, and the numbers are rising. Even more worrisome, this has been the first year with any indication of person-to-person -person infection. A report published in the Chinese Medical Journal on May 20th cites a 66-year-old male who was admitted for a severe cough that contained bloody sputum. After completing x-rays and other examinations, they confirmed an H7N9 infection. However, the second case was the man who shared the room with him in the medical facility. This was the first confirmed case of human-to-human -human transmission. Number 2. European Foul Brood did you know that one out of every three bites of food we take is dependent on honeybee pollination? The scary part is that bees are dying at alarming rates. In 2015, 42% of bee colonies in the United States collapsed. Many environmentalists are concerned. What's responsible? It's a disease called European fowl brood, and it's caused by the bacteria Melissococcus platunius. It targets honeybee larvae, before the cap stage, where they ingest the bacteria, and the bacteria acts like a parasite, competing for food and resources and ultimately leading to the larvae's death. There's only one antibiotic labeled for control of European fowl brood, but research shows that it's not very effective, and more than half of sanitized hives are reinfected within the next year. If European fowl brood goes viral, it could have devastating impact to our food supply. Number 1. AFM A baffling new illness is responsible for a nightmarish scenario. A child wakes up and his legs don't move. Soon, he's paralyzed from the neck down. The disease mimics one of the world's most feared illnesses, polio, and it's left hundreds of children suddenly frozen. In a recent 2014 U.S. outbreak, there were at least 1,153 severe cases of EVD68, known as AFM, at least 14 deaths, and 120 known cases of paralysis. The shocking uptick led the CDC to give the condition a name, acute flaccid myelitis. What's very concerning is the CDC does not require doctors to report cases of AFM. Is there more to this virus than authorities are letting on? From polio-type viruses to super gonorrhea, there are a lot of nasty things out there that are poised for an outbreak. It's really not a question of if, but when. But the best thing you could probably do is just wash your hands and don't touch your face. The rest of life kind of takes care of itself. Hey guys, please subscribe. It could be your good deed for the day.